Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to get introduced to Platform IO, our development framework or a development platform, which is there for uh, uh, for embedded systems. You can use this uh, environment for developing projects of various kinds of I, by various I means thousands of kinds of boards, thousands of kinds of. Uh, um, projects involving different development frameworks, different languages for embedded systems. So it's a great tool. And this tool can be integrated and become a part of your Visual Studio code. So uh, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a very basic Arduino framework based project for ESP32 Node MCU board. And in the successive videos, we are going to develop IoT solutions making use of uh, ESP32 and various sensors. So it's like a get started or get setting, getting setting up uh, the environment kind of a video. Uh, by the way, all the codes which I'm going to share with you in the coming videos is going to be running on Arduino IDE. If you are much into this, you know, this Arduino IDE, the old one this one then still the code is going to work but i want you to get introduced to a much more professional tool a much more uh visible tool by visible i means the tool which enables you to uh work in collaboration with the team members right uh so well um, in the coming videos, I'm going to be talking about the benefits of this tool, but uh, anyhow, let's get started. So the first thing first, you need to install the platform IO extension. So for that, you first need to install Visual Studio Code, go to the extensions and type P platform IO. Right. This is the extension you need to install. Once it gets installed, you need to restart the Visual Studio Code and you will reach this stage let's create a new project click the new project let's give it a name let's call it esp32 first hello world right and here is the list now you can see the number of ports it supports right it includes hundreds of those my project is going to be for ESP32 board, the most famous one, and particularly for Node MCU board. So this is the kind of the board I'm going to use, right? So for that, you need to select this particular configuration. Okay, so some of you may already know that ESP has their own development framework for uh, their solutions. That's called ESP IDF, ESP Expressive IoT Development Framework. Well, I'm going, I have plans to make series of videos on that platform because that plat plat platform, that development environment is very sophisticated for developing IoT solutions and it has many, many benefits over Arduinos. But anyhow, for this one, I'm going to stick with Arduino. So just keep it Arduino here, right? So for any of the board which you're going to select in platform IO is going to give you the, select, the available options, right? For, let's say, for ESP solutions, you're going to have multiple framework support. Okay. Click finish and let it set up the first environment for you, the first very bare bone um, project for you. Okay. So in this project, these are the folders which you're going to see. Uh, the first file which is already opened is is INE file. This file has many benefits. I'm going to talk about those benefits about uh, maintaining the libraries and keeping the same versions for different uh, firmware developers. Well, for this setup, we just ignore it. Just come to the first uh, uh, file, the main file. That's the CPP file. So this CPP file is basically an empty file an empty file having just two functions, the setup and the loop. So let's write some code here. In fact, let's just copy the hello world code here from Arduino IDE.
<laughs> set it to 13 right and i are to indent it and that's it click the compile button okay so for compiling the project you need to click here this is the compile button for uploading the project you need to click here okay and the good thing about uh, this tool is the platform io tool is that it's class platform it is uh, there's a support for linux there's a support for windows there's a support for mac uh, and uh, in linux the good thing is that it automatically detects the available uh, ports i just connected my board to uh to the computer and um, what i need to do first is is to give the permission to that particular usb port well this is not necessary for windows but you will usually face this issue that it will not allow you to upload the code uh in case of linux uh, especially after uh ubuntu 20. okay so for uploading the button click here now it's going to upload the code okay another good thing about this tool is the code is uploading uh is that it has a built-in serial monitor so to open the serial monitor you need to click here okay we are not publishing or putting any values in this project in this uh, uh, to the serial monitor anyhow uh, uh, so we are not getting any output here but uh, let's say if i want to print something i write that code uh, just to give you an introduction to the serial monitor of it so again dot serial baud rate right instead of no issue okay so let's write serial dot print Alan. hello right let's comment this out the entire thing right. compile it sorry it's serial dot begin okay let's play, click the compile button it's compiling the code now it's compiled let's upload it So the code is there now let's see the output is getting printed on the serial monitor so that is for this video that was the introduction to uh, setting up the first project i'm going to uh, now uh, create a very first project in which i'm going to interface a sensor with uh, esp32 and later on we are going to upload the data to cloud uh, that is for this video thank you very much